Can you spot the difference between these two jackets? Friends, welcome back to the Brave New Wear Show. My name's Christian. Today, I'm looking at two jackets, both by Carhartt, both titled the Detroit Jacket. But the major difference, at least at first glance, is that one costs $90 and the other costs $260. And if you watch the beginning and you're wondering to yourself, how are they different at all? They look almost identical. It has a lot to do with construction, branding, and some magic in between. To begin, what? just to kind of, if you're, you're like clueless, you have no idea what I'm talking about, let me at least explain what Carhartt is. It's an iconic American workwear brand that started in Michigan in the late 19th century. And since that time has become a staple for workwear. You see jackets like the Detroit jacket on everyone from cowboys to farmers to construction workers. If you grow up in rural America, the Detroit jacket is kind of a familiar garment. And then there's Carhartt Whip. That stands for work in progress. Now, Carhartt Whip is a diffusion line, a related line to Carhartt that specifically focuses more on streetwear and kind of fashion in general. It started in 1989, the year, the centennial anniversary of Carhartt, and its initial impetus was basically to introduce the classic American brand to Europe. In the 1990s, the title Work in Progress officially began and Carhartt started to create these products that were directed towards a European market. City folks now, I really yeah. like Carhartt Whip personally. I think it's a combination of the price point, which I think for the price you get a pretty good value. The cuts and designs are, in my opinion, pretty cool. And almost all the garments stand up to a Carhartt level of rough wearing that Frankly, when you spend the money on it, you're gonna get a garment that you can wear for like forever. I'm sure if you spend any time on like eBay or Grailed and you look up Detroit jackets, you'll see a lot of them that are a few decades old, you know, beat up, worn, sun bleached, but they're still ready to rock. That's kind of Carhartt's MO. They make really hard wearing workwear clothes. I was interested in picking up a Detroit jacket you know, a new winter jacket for myself. And I was looking at the OG and the work in progress version. But just based on the pictures on the website alone, I wasn't really able to discern what difference there might be. Is it literally just a difference of the brand? Is Carhartt taking a jacket and you putting it on its diffusion line and just pricing it at a higher price just because? Before I go any further, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. If you're interested in picking up the Detroit jacket, there are links down below. They help out the channel. And, um, you know, comment and like. Duh. Hey, folks, just don't Like any it. good scientist, I entered this experiment with a couple of hypotheses. Disease. Hypotheses. To begin with, one of my theories was simply because of the brand. Because it's branded as Carhartt Whip. Because it's targeted towards more fashionable people and because the places that you would buy it are totally different. You know, if you're walking down Lafayette Street in Soho and you walk to Carhartt Whip, you're probably more inclined to spend $250 on a jacket than say if you're buying your clothes at Tractor Supply and you see a Detroit jacket and you pick it up there. The setting is different, the logo is different, maybe that's just like literally all that is in play. Theory number two because the small differences are significant enough when it comes to fashion or personal enjoyment. Maybe the small differences on this jacket, like this has the two-way zip, the dub zip closure. Maybe those small little differences feel significant enough when it comes to what kind of jacket you wanna buy. If you're buying this 
to wear it as something that looks nice rather than just a practical garment, maybe you're willing to spend all that more money because it looks better. My other theory was maybe it's just because like Carhartt Whip will offer totally different options than the original Carhartt. And it's the name of the game. If people would buy a Detroit jacket in like teal or like a plaid or whatever, maybe it's worth it. Ultimately, after my hours of research, it, it kind of comes down to a combination of things. It, it's a lot of those things pulled into one. But I guess what I was surprised by was it isn't just the brand, at least to my eye. It's not just, hey, wouldn't it be ridiculous if we could resell the regular jacket under a different name with different pictures, people would spend X more for it. First off, let's just talk about like the measurements, the sizing. These are both a size large. So I sized up a little bit and both versions of the Detroit jacket are pretty boxy. And that is, the boxiness is something that I initially thought was interesting. So like the regular Carhartt jacket in a large, it's about 26 inches across the bust. It's about 27.5 inches long. Its shoulder is about 20.5 and its sleeve is 26.5. The whip version, and this initially surprised me, is actually less boxy than the original Detroit jacket. It's actually 24.5 inches across. That's like an inch and a half less than the other one. It's about the same length, same shoulder, and the sleeve is an inch shorter, which if you saw the back to back of me wearing the two, the large regular size car jacket, the sleeves are kind of a little too long for me. For one, two jackets are made in two totally different countries, two totally different continents. The original Detroit jacket is made in South America and the whip version is made in Cambodia. Now, of course, something I want to point out, we, uh, we often jump to saying, where was that thing made? The country will determine the quality. That's not always a perfect analogy. You can have something made in Italy and all the factory workers are Chinese. You can have something made in India and China and some factories in those countries are actually state of the art and unmatched in terms of their technology and their production. So just because it's made in country X doesn't necessarily mean it's really nice or it's really bad. So the fact that this one's made in Cambodia doesn't mean that it's like a better or worse quality. It just kind of feels like it's a nicer quality to me. And I think that the Cambodia factory honestly probably takes more time and energy. Like if you look at the stitching, and I'll have a zoom in of this, there's not a huge significant difference. Like I don't see like, oh geez, the original has really bad stitching by comparison. But I can tell that a couple of the seams and a couple of the details look like they're a little more streamlined and a little more attention is played to it. Additionally, like I said, the lining in the whip jacket is a nicer quality. It's a nicer version. I haven't had the chance to wear these two jackets in like real cold, so I'm not exactly sure if they are equivalent in terms of warmth, but this one feels nicer. Additionally, the whip, that whip whip. So it comes with these little tags attached to it. And they specify things like organic cotton and how it's the chemicals they use to treat the outside are sustainable and not destructive. The OG Detroit jacket has no such disclaimers. Uh, I'm not sure. I think that it's possible that they're both made in the same way and this jacket, you know, targeting yuppies and millennials just wants to specify that it's good for the planet. I'm not exactly sure because the duff canvas on both feels very similar. They could be totally different, like this could be made sustainably and that one isn't, but you couldn't tell the difference. But that might be worth something. If you really care about climate change, which you should, and you're willing to put your money where your mouth is, this apparently is a much more sustainable and uh, planet friendly version. So that could play into the price. When it comes down to it, it just feels like this jacket was made more for fashion. I mean, the fact that the pocket is higher up here makes more sense in terms of that feels more natural. That's where like our shirt pockets are. 
but the fact that park gets a little lower here kind of makes sense to me in terms of if you're working you don't necessarily want to have to go this high to get things out of that pocket it's easier if it's like right here in the middle so there are a bunch of details that just seem more fashion focused on this like there's these joints right here there's like i said there's the buttons up here that kind of make it bunch up and ultimately i guess the question comes down to because initially when i was picking out the two of these i thought maybe i'll return both maybe i'll actually keep one and at first the only thing that stood out to me was the fact that this has a double zip honestly you know i'm a sucker for that kind of thing i just feel like it kind of makes the coat look better when i can unzip the bottom it's a little silly but it also makes it easier to drive in too and my thought was well what if they're basically identical except for the zipper i bet i could go and buy a zipper and bring it to a tailor and ask them to replace the zipper for a lot cheaper but ultimately it turned out that this coat is kind of different i mean look at it it just kind of it looks better and the at the end of the day it needs to be a decision of how much do you value that how much do i value that this kind of just looks a little bit better do i value it enough to spend say an extra 170 dollars on a similar garment and ultimately i haven't made up my mind whether i'm going to keep this keep that or you know potentially i might just get like the original brown colorway just because it's a, it's a car or a classic but I'm kind of leaning towards this jacket. I didn't want to spend that much money. And you know, it's like the, another part of my brain saying like, well, if you just go with the OG, then you have like over a hundred dollars to buy other pieces. Like you could buy other Carhartt pieces, but I'm unsure. For one, one of the things that occurred to me was $250 isn't ludicrous for a winter jacket. I mean, my, Nupsy is, how much does a Nupsy cost? $200, $300, around that. Um, if you go, say you're walking down Lafayette and you go into Supreme, Supreme's outerwear typically costs around $250 retail. That's not insane. In fact, you could walk into a Zara and spend $250 on a winter coat, and you would be much better off picking up this in terms of quality and longevity. So $250, not absurd for a winter coat, or rather winter jacket. And I think Carhartt's masterminds behind the scenes probably were thinking that as well. They're saying, this is an outerwear piece. When people buy outerwear in a winter place, they're wearing it basically all season. So it's something they're willing to invest in because it kind of is in their outfits constantly. So they might be more willing to spend a little extra dough. And at the end of the day, for my purposes, I gotta ask myself, do these tiny details that make this jacket just a little bit different and fit a little bit better, make it worth that much more money? And ultimately, I personally come to this conclusion. If there's a piece in my wardrobe, regardless of how much I spent or how little I spent, if it doesn't really fit the right way, if I have trouble kind of pairing it with different outfits or garments, if I kind of am not immediately gravitating towards it, I feel like it's worthless to me because I don't really want to wear it. And I'm never really in a position to spend like Prada prices, of course. But if you say, if I took a garment and you could put it into a magical machine, like one that I was like, this is pretty good, but there has there's these little things. I wish it was just a little bit better. I would definitely cough up the extra dough just to make those pieces a little bit better. Because at the end of the day, I don't want a million pieces. I want a few pieces that are really, really great, that will last, that make me feel confident when I'm wearing them. And if $270 is the price for that, I'm kind of like, it could be worth it. It could actually be worth it, even if the details are minute. At the end of the day, these are pieces that we buy because we like fashion, because we enjoy to wear them, because they are practical and it will keep me warm, but I look cool too. So, so, I don't know, you tell me. So guys, let me know what you think down below. If you're interested in picking up either jacket, I got links down below. 
one of them is affiliate link. Why don't you click on it for me? Come on. And um, more videos coming up. And I'll catch you guys on the flip side.